Coming up, a star dance over AOPA headquarters. A flight to Maine and a flying adventure. To be young and adventurous, a record-breaking flight. And why is all the cool stuff in Europe? AOPA Live this week begins in just a moment. There are many important things to consider before purchasing an aircraft. Let the experts at Aerospace Reports help guide you through the process. We combine expert knowledge with our long-standing commitment to personalized customer service to perfect your transaction. Learn more at aerospacereports.com. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Rudinger. You can just feel the excitement building here in Frederick, Melissa. Yes, you can, Tom. That's because we're just three weeks away from the fly-in to our Maryland headquarters. This will be a very special fly-in because AOPA is also celebrating its 80th anniversary and we'll have a special treat for everyone who comes. We will. 80 drones in honor of 80 years. They'll light up the night sky in an aerial spectacular staged by Great Lakes Drone Company. AOPA Live's Josh Cochran went behind the scenes of a drone light show to see what goes into creating this aeronautical work of art. It takes a lot of work and coordination to get 80 miniature aircraft ready to fly within feet of each other, and the person that makes it all work is Great Lakes Drone Company Director of Operations, Matt Quinn. Matt sees drones as a gateway to aviation. Aviation is fun. I mean, I grew up in Civil Air Patrol, wanted to go in the Air Force. They wouldn't let me fly because of my vision. So then I uh, went into the public safety field and then uh, from there found a way where I could kind of combine everything and get the aviation aspect going and um, got more into the entertainment aviation aspect. And the process to create an entertaining show starts with the design. It really comes down to what's the story that you want to tell. You know, unlike fireworks, we can actually create shapes, mix it with music, do voiceover, and tell a story. Um, so that's kind of where our focus is, is what kind of story do we want to tell? Great Lakes tells that story using custom-made drones with LED lights. They're about 7,000 lumen apiece, full RGB, full color spectrum, so you know, if we're making the AOPA logo and it's a specific color, um, we can get the RGB code for that and create that in the show. Once the show design is finalized and Great Lakes is on location, the team checks the frequencies in the area and meticulously pre-flights each drone before placing them in a grid. Once the sun sets and the show is ready to start, Matt and his team do meticulous monitoring of how everything is working. So we're monitoring all the telemetry coming back from each of the drones. We're monitoring for um, any proximity issues. We're also monitoring uh, with our Fordham system. We're monitoring whether or not there's any birds around us, whether or not there's any other drones or aircraft around us. And then we're also monitoring the weather and the winds and all those different things that we have to look at just from like a pilot standpoint. While Matt is busy monitoring the show, the audience is experiencing something amazing. The biggest thing that we want audiences to experience is something new, something different. And everybody has to understand that this is still in its infancy. Um, as technology increases and becomes smaller and more available, everything that we do is only going to get better. The drone shows at AOPA's Flying will be a way to celebrate AOPA's history while using aviation technology of the future. So for the AOPA show, um, I can't really let the cat out of the bag of some of the stuff that we're doing, um, but it's definitely going to be pilot focused. Um, we're going to represent some of the, the history and the meaning behind AOPA, what AOPA is about, and celebrate their 80th anniversary. Josh Cochran, AOPA Live. The drone show will be part of our Friday night flight line cookout for family and friends. You'll enjoy drinks, camaraderie, unlimited food, and amazing aviation experiences. And speaking of amazing aviation experiences, at the Flight Line Cookout, you'll get a close-up look at the amazing flying skills of the AOPA Stoll Invitational Pilots. As they demonstrate incredibly short takeoffs and landings, there will be a wide variety of airplanes and pilots flying in the event, including some familiar faces like AOPA President Mark Baker, Air Safety Institute Director Richard McSpadden and Editor-at-Large Dave Hirschman. You won't want to miss that. And five C-47s and DC-3s will be dropping paratroopers over Frederick on May 10th and 11th. You heard that right. Some of the airplanes from the D-Day squadron will be dropping members of the Liberty Jump Team. AOPA teamed up with them to commemorate two anniversaries. The 75th anniversary of Allied Troops Invasion of Normandy and AOPA's 80th anniversary. Later, those aircraft will join a fleet of C-47s flying across the English Channel to reenact the Normandy invasion. You can find out more at this website. 
and we plan to be with them and report back to you from France. The freedom to fly is the top priority for AOPA, and that extends to all pilots, even those that stay on the ground. And that's why AOPA told the FAA that there should be some changes to the Part 107 regulations to allow drone pilots more freedom, consistent with safety. So in our comments on the proposed rule changes, we said that drones could be flown at night with anti-collision lights. That could be seen for at least three miles. And for flights over people, AOPA urged a risk-based approach that would reduce the likelihood of injury without imposing undue restrictions on drone operations. You can read our full comments on our website. And if you have thoughts on the matter, you have until Monday to comment to the FAA. So we put a lot of work into these comments. It's really, really important that we integrate drones safely, but the key word is we do need to integrate. It's the only way this thing's gonna work. Right, <laughs> and the idea that we're gonna bury our heads in the sands and pretend that the drones aren't out there, that's not, not an approach either. That it's doesn't not the way to fly, go. does it? <laughs> it's so, it does not fly, very good. Well, drone flight at an airport is usually verboten, but uh, Delta wants to do it anyway. The airline wants to use drones to inspect the exterior of its airliners at its Atlanta Hartsfield maintenance facility and some other locations. Some airlines are already using drones inside hangars, but Delta wants to fly outside. The most common use would be to look for damage after lightning strikes, but regulators haven't approved it yet. A big concern is a drone going rogue and shutting down a major airport. They're claiming major success in Germany. Aero Friedrichshafen wrapped last Saturday and organizers claimed it was the biggest show yet. Some 757 exhibitors and more than 32,000 visitors. Aero is the biggest general aviation show in Europe. Those thousands of visitors strolled through 12 hangar-like exhibit halls gawking at some truly innovative aircraft. And Tom Horn has just returned from Aero. So Tom, what's so different about Europe? Why so many unusual light aircraft designs? Well, Tom, I think it's because the certification structure over there is designed to maximize uh, the manufacturer's freedom to design airplanes. Uh, there's usually only two parameters that they have to pay attention to, uh, the max takeoff weight and the stall speed uh, in most cases. After that, it's anything goes. Uh, in the ultralight category, for example, their ultralight category, uh, you can go up to uh, 450 kilos, which is like 990 pounds, and the stall speed must be uh, 35 knots. After that, you could have any kind of engine power, any, uh, you could have retractable gear, constant speed propeller, uh, extra uh, uh, capacity for fuel, mm -hmm. so that there's a lot more room for innovation. And with the other groups of certification levels for light aircraft, uh, for example, the uh, LSA, they have an LSA category, uh, it goes up in weight. It goes up to 1,322 pounds, I think, and the stall speed is 45 knots. Same thing with the VLA, that goes up to 1,650 pounds. So uh, you're free to innovate and put any kind of engine in there. Uh, it could be turbocharged, it could be electric, right. it could be uh, any of the new designs that are coming along, the radio ones. And so this allows the designers to uh, give you more useful load, give you more uh, payload, f uh, fuel payload, right. and travel farther distances. So you have a lot more uh, utility out of those planes. Right, and a lot higher speeds too. It's amazing some of the, the yeah. cruise speeds are seeing. Yeah, there's, there's, uh, there's no VNE uh, as such, uh, but all they care about is the stall speed. Right. So you're you see 160 knot airplanes. Uh, as long as they can meet the weight requirement and then the stall, uh, they're good to go. Yep. And so there, from a certification standpoint, I know that our DC office has been working on trying to bring some of that innovation to the United States, right? We Let's are. Say. We're actually trying to get some rulemaking going with the FAA to, to allow us to bring that kind of innovation into the US. I think if we do that, we may see a similar market over here with, with more innovation. But there's too many limitations today on the light sport category in yeah. the US. Yeah, all right. Well, thanks, Tom. Looking like a really good show. I'm looking forward to hopefully going back next year. It's, it's, it's sure. a fun one. Well, hey, when we come back, what goes up has to come down. And a perfect flying getaway. AOPA Live this week continues in a moment.
Purchasing your own aircraft is an exciting experience. AOPA Finance simplifies the process, saving you money with lower interest rates and hassle-free loans, so you get into your new aircraft sooner. AOPA Finance, the right approach to buying an aircraft. Welcome back. It's a record set by Charles Lindbergh and broken by Chuck Yeager. Now the title of the fastest flight from New York to Paris belongs to two young pilots. AOPA Live's Paul Harrop caught up with one of them at Sun and Fun. Phil Bozak and Dirk Reuter live by simple rules. We, we have a motto. We call it do cool sh**. The most recent cool sh** situation started with a 4 a.m. phone call from Dirk. Phil, let's fly across the Atlantic nonstop in a TBM. Most people might hesitate. They might go, okay, you got it. I'm in. When are we doing this? After a year of planning, they launched out. We take a TBM 930 at the 300-gallon turtle pack from New York to Paris nonstop to beat our 35-year-old record. A record FAI says has been held by Chuck Yeager since 1985. Phil's only 31, wasn't even born when he said it. Before that, Lindbergh had it. Now, Phil and Dirk own the title at 8 hours, 37 minutes. But they're not stopping there. Phil's drive developed when his dad died when he was young. And it really spurred me to grow up quickly. It spurred me to, to push myself and really live each day as it's my last. And I just, I don't want to have any regrets. So to do stuff like this, it just pushes me every single day to find something cool to do, to help others, and to just be happy. And in that quest, the team is setting their sights on a circumnavigation record. Cool stuff indeed. Paul Harrop, AOPA Live. <laughs> They're having some fun. What a trip. <laughs> in several levels, what a trip. <laughs> and what a record to break. They're in, they're in with uh, aviation royalty, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, so. So good on them. I hope that the, uh, the circumnavigation works out. Absolutely. And speaking of breaking records, an incredible airplane called the Strato Launch just flew for the first time. The mission is to make it easier to launch spacecraft. The airplane flies up to 35,000 feet where the launch vehicle is released. The Strato Launch is massive. The company says the wingspan is the largest of any airplane ever built, longer than a football field. It's powered by six of the same engines found on Boeing 747s. And right now, the launch vehicles are still in development, but when the technology is ready, Strato Launch will be ready for it. SpaceX is making progress with their launch vehicles. The company just flew the first commercial mission with the Falcon Heavy rocket. SpaceX says that the Falcon Heavy is the most powerful rocket in the world. The rocket just launched a communications satellite and after the launch, the two side boosters successfully landed at Cape Canaveral. The Falcon Heavy's center core successfully landed on a ship in the Atlantic Ocean, but later fell over in heavy seas. SpaceX is making great strides in recovering their rockets, which greatly reduces the cost to launch. Divert or continue to your destination. Decisions like this during flight can have significant consequences. Now you can practice aerial decision making safely on the ground with the AOPA Air Safety Institute's new online course called Weather or Not. The first course focuses on thunderstorms. For the course, you take a scenario flight where you have to decide to continue to the destination or divert when faced with degrading, threatening weather. Each choice takes you down a path and the flight ends with a positive or negative outcome and an analysis of your choice. You can find it on our Air Safety Institute website. And summer's getting closer and with it, an opportunity to take your family on vacation in your airplane. I found a beautiful destination for pilots who love the outdoors. It's a serene summer day on the St. Croix River in southeastern Maine. And you could say we're doing more catching than fishing today. That's how plentiful the fish are here on the river that forms the border between the United States and Canada. We're taking a few days away at Weatherby's Fishing and Hunting Lodge in Grand Lake Stream, Maine. And with us is Sid Elner, a Korean War bomber pilot who today flies a Cessna 172RG out of White Plains, New York. Elna brought his daughter and her husband, and the family came along with Peter Blake, a longtime friend in his Cessna 182RG. Weatherby's is an ideal destination for pilots. Princeton, Maine Municipal Airport, it's about 20 minutes away and an easy pickup from the lodge. Elner and Blake and their families have been making the trip for decades. Basically, there's a tranquility when you're on the lake or when you're on the river. It's just a camaraderie of being with friends, being in the open air and uh, enjoying your, your time. And that tranquility, along with the fishing, is what keeps people coming back to Weatherby's year after year. The tradition 
uh, carried on and the families would bring their kids and their grandkids and you know over the years multiple generations would come back and and today we still see uh, parties with multiple generations that come that have been coming for 50 or more years. The facility started out as a tannery in the late 1800s. Within a couple of decades the tannery closed but the owner's house survived on as a boarding house for sportsmen. Later numerous rustic cabins were added around the property which is pretty much how it sits today. Prices vary by season, but are typically around $200 a night per adult for the American plan, which includes lodging, meals, and fishing equipment. And speaking of fishing, there's an abundance here. The hatchery is primarily a salmon hatchery, but later in the summer, it's smallmouth bass, which is a lot more action than the salmon fishing, and we kind of like the action, even though, you know, a lot of them are small fish, but you occasionally get the nice 20-inch fish, and it's a lot of fun. And once you catch the fish, it doesn't take long before you get to enjoy them. By noon on our Saturday outing, we were beached on a remote crook by the river. We're seemingly out of nowhere. The guides pulled out everything needed for a gourmet lunch over an open fire. Fried potatoes, camp coffee, breaded and fried fish, thick steaks, and fresh cookies stuffed us all. Whether you're into fishing or hunting or not at all, whether bees and the surrounding lakes, streams, and woods is worth a visit. It's like a step back to simpler times, a place where the only thing new are the memories you make on each trip. You can find other ideas for flying destinations in the AOPA Travel Pilot newsletter. It was a great time. That it's, looks like a great time. It's a really fun place uh, if you're into fishing or any outdoor kind of thing and uh, just enjoy the water and it's, uh, beautiful streams and lakes up there. That's my kind of flying. There and, you go. Fishing. <laughs> well, that's it for us this week. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, we always love hearing from you. Our email is aopalive at aopa.org and we hope you'll join us again next Thursday for another edition of AOPA Live This Week.